In this section, we're going to quickly walk through how to integrate a database into the Dagger workflow. We're going to use Room from Android Architecture Components. However, the specific database you use isn't really important for what we want to cover here. My goal is to show you how you'd be able to interact with any database using objects that could be injected with Dagger. First, we need to add the dependency to our build.gradle file. Open the project level build.gradle file and add the arch components version variable, which we'll be able to use in our dependency import statement. Now in your app modules build.gradle file, we're going to add three dependencies. We need to add a dependency for the runtime, support for RxJava2, and the compiler dependency. And notice that the compiler dependency uses annotation processor rather than implementation. Now we can start adding the database classes. Let's add a package called database to the advanced Android package. And just in case we add some more later, let's add another package called favorites. We're going to keep track of our favorite contributors in the first part of the database. So we're going to try to keep it organized. Now we can create our first entity. Create a class called favorite contributor. Add the at entity annotation, and this will tell Room that this needs to be a new table. Room requires one of the fields to be annotated with primary key, and since this will only have one field, which will be the ID of the contributor, we'll go ahead and add that annotation. We can add that as a constructor parameter and then expose this through a getter. There will be no setter, so this is essentially immutable. Um, we cannot use auto value with room, so that's why we're defining the object like this. Next, we need to create an object that will allow us to perform queries on our specific entity. Create an interface called Favorite Contributor DAO. We'll need to annotate this with the DAO annotation, and again, make sure that this is an interface. We're going to add three methods to this interface, one that will allow us to get all currently added favorited contributors, a method to insert a favorite contributor, and a method to delete a favorite contributor. Notice with the query annotation, we actually put in SQL syntax. So we're going to select all items or all rows from the favorite contributor table, and we're going to return this as a flowable. Now we can't return this as an observable because we need to be able to handle back pressure. So a flowable is just like an observable, except it has the capability to handle back pressure. And what back pressure is, is basically if something's being emitted faster than you can consume it, RxJava needs to know what to do with these extra items that are being emitted that you aren't able to process fast enough. And what will usually happen, the default behavior that is set for room, the latest emissions will replace what hasn't been processed yet. So to keep it simple, a flowable is just like an observable as far as you're concerned when applying operators and subscribing to it. Now we need to create our app database class. So in the database package, create a class called app database. And this will extend room database and be abstract. We need to add the database annotation and give it all of the entities that will be in this database. For now, that's just our favorite contributor entity. And then we also need to specify the database version. Finally, we'll create a method to expose our DAO object. And this is abstract. And so just like auto value, we're defining these abstract classes and interfaces and Room is actually going to generate the implementation for us. Now this is the class that we want to be injectable. We want an object to be able to inject app database. How would you guess that we would do that? In the database package, create a class called database module. We are going to provide this database in its own module and add that to our application component. We will provide this as a singleton we need the application context, so add that as a method argument. And we will return the room.database builder, passing in the context, the database class literal, and a name for our database. And then we just call .build, and that's it for this module. 
Next, so classes can inject this, we're going to add this to the application component and that will make this module part of the dagger object graph. Simply add this to the modules declaration in the component annotation. And then since we're adding something to our application component, we probably need to add it to our test application component as well. So we'll go ahead and open that and add it there too. And if you can't tell, I did have to record this separately because I forgot to originally add this module to the test application component. And had I ran my tests right after doing this, that would have been painfully obvious. So long story short, run your tests after all changes. And that does it for this video. We now have a database object that's injectable. In the next video, we will see how we can use this to be able to keep track of favorite contributors. Rather than access our database directly from outside classes, we're going to create an intermediary that will wrap our database and expose the methods we need to be able to get data from our database and put data into the database. This does a couple things. For one, if we ever need to switch database implementations, that should require minimal changes since all of our classes will be talking through this intermediary rather than directly with the database. And secondly, we can build our internal API how we want and not necessarily how whatever database we're using requires. In the favorites package, create a class called favorite service. This is going to be a singleton and it will inject the app database that we created in the last video. The two things we'll need exposed on this service is a way to get all favorited contributors and a way to toggle the favorite status of a individual contributor. Let's add the methods for, for those now and we'll fill them out as we go. We're going to expose the favorited contributors as an observable of a set of longs, so observable of a set of IDs. This will allow us to do constant time lookup when we're checking if a specific contributor is a favorite. And next, we want to be able to toggle the favorite status of a specific contributor. We'll just call that toggle favorite contributor and we'll be able to pass in a contributor instance. We're going to store the favorited contributor IDs in a behavior relay. So if we had to subscribe to the database directly, we'd need to loop through each favorited contributor and compare IDs to see if a specific one is favorited. By using a set of long values, we can call dot contains on the set with an ID and get a constant time lookup. To be, able, to be able to do that in the constructor, we are going to get a reference to our favorite contributor DAO object using the app database. We're going to call get favorited contributors and subscribe on schedulers.io. And now we're going to map that. So in this map operator, we have the list of favorite contributors. We're just going to create a new hash set and populate it with all of the IDs from those contributors. And then in subscribe, we can use our behavior relay, the favorited contributor IDs as the consumer, and that'll pass that hash set to that behavior relay, which will then emit to any subscribers. For on error, we'll use a lambda like we normally do and just log to timber. And we aren't assigning this to a disposable and disposing anywhere because this favorite service is a singleton. So it's going to be alive throughout the life cycle of our app. We don't have to worry about ever disposing any subscriptions we have inside of it. And if you're wondering why we can pass the relay in, again, remember that a relay is a consumer. And in on next, when you call subscribe, it requires a consumer. So that's why we can directly use the relay when we call dot subscribe. Let's go ahead and just return that relay from this observable method that we're exposing. And since I made the poor choice of naming the relay and method the same in the beginning, let's refactor the relay into favorited contributor ID relay, just to differentiate the method and the field. Now we can fill out the logic for the toggle favorite contributor functionality. All operations for room need to be performed on a background thread. And we don't necessarily want to enforce this for outside callers. So we create a private method called run DB op that takes in an action. And we can easily do this on a background thread by using RxJava 
and we can do completable dot from action passing in that action. We will subscribe on schedulers.io and simply call dot subscribe. We're not going to do anything when that's completed, but we still do want to handle the error case and log it. So let's just use an empty Lambda for on next and log to timber for on error. So now in the toggle method, we can call run db op and pass in a new action, which will just be a Lambda with empty parentheses. And in here, we want to check if the passed in contributor is currently a favorite. We can get the current set of IDs by calling get value on our relay and then check if it contains the ID from contributor. If it does, we want to delete it from our favorites. Otherwise, we're going to add it. So first, let's create a method called delete favorite contributor, passing in that contributor. In here, we're going to get a reference to our DAO the same way using the app database and simply call delete favorite. We need to use new favorite contributor passing in the ID, since remember what's stored in our database is a favorite contributor, not the contributor itself. You could also make the delete call on the DAO be a query that deletes a row with a given ID. We did it this way because it's something Room supports by being able to just pass in an object. It would probably be more efficient to model it as a query. That's up to you. If the current contributor is not a favorite, we want to add that to the database. So create a method called add favorite contributor, again, passing in that contributor instead. And here we do pretty much the same thing as delete, except we call add favorite. And now our favorite service is done and ready to be consumed. In the next video, we're going to modify the contributors list on the details screen to allow us to mark contributors as favorited or not. In this video, we're going to add the ability to update the favorite status of a contributor on the details screen and see that reflected in the UI. Open the contributor renderer in the details package. And up in the constructor, we're going to inject the favorite service so we can give that to the view binder. Add that as a constructor parameter for the view binder and now we'll have access to it. Down in the bind method, we're going to need access to the contributor instance later, so create a field for that. And we're going to modify the background color of the parent view. So let's go to the XML for this list item and add an ID for the linear layout parent. Make sure to add that with a bind view annotated field, and now we'll have access to it. There's a dependency we have in our build.gradle file in the app module that we haven't used yet, and that is Rx binding. What Rx binding does is turn a lot of the view related listeners into observables. So you can get an observable for click events, text changes, layout changes. Most things you can add listeners for to a view are covered in Rx binding. We're going to use it to subscribe to view attach and detach events. Since we're going to be subscribing to an observable from the favorite service, which is a singleton, we need to be sure that we dispose of that disposable when our view is detached, or we would leak the context. Let's go back to the contributor renderer and in the viewbinder constructor, call rxview.attachEvents and pass in the parent view reference. And in subscribe, we can get a reference to the view from the event and basically just check if it's attached or not. If it is attached, then we want to subscribe to the favorite service. If it's not, we want to dispose of the disposable. Let's move description into its own method. Create a method called listen for favorite changes. We'll need a field for our disposable. So at the top, create a private disposable field and call it favorite disposable. Down in listen for favorite changes, we can assign favorite disposable to the favorite service dot favorited contributor IDs subscription. We're going to filter and make sure our contributor is not null. This is probably never going to happen, but it's just a good thing to check because we do need to ensure the contributor is set. And now we'll map this to a Boolean. So we have access to our set of IDs. We'll map it using favorite IDs dot contains the ID of our contributor. 
And then remember, we are doing this on a background thread in the favorite service. So we're going to observe on the main thread thread. And when we subscribe, we now have a Boolean representing if our contributor is a favorite or not. We're going to keep it simple and just change the background color based on favorite status. So if it's a favorite contributor, we're going to make it yellow. Otherwise, we're going to make it transparent so it looks like it did before. We are actually subscribed to the relay from the favorite service and relays do not have on error events. So we don't need to handle on error here because it will never be called. Now, obviously that could change in the future. Maybe the implementation changes in favorite service. If you want, adding that is probably not a bad idea just to handle any future changes. Now back where we're listening for the attach events, we can dispose of our disposable if necessary. We can use butter knife to set an on long click listener and that's what we'll do to toggle the favorite status. Use the long click annotation and pass in the ID of the view that you want to set the listener on. We'll use the parent view. You can name the method whatever you want and it does have to return a boolean since this is a long click listener. And all we have to do in here is make sure our contributor is not null. If not, we can call toggle favorite contributor on the favorite service. And just return true at the bottom of this method. Now we can run and see what happens. So if we open a repo and long press on a contributor, it turns to yellow. Not super exciting, but the cool thing is that this is being triggered by changes to the database. It's not a direct change we're making in the view. So when we toggle the status, we're updating the database and in another part of the view, we're listening for changes to the database through the favorite service, which is updating the view. So this is putting the data in the database before it's reflected in the view. So we have one source of truth, which is our app database via the favorite service. And that's it for this section. So we now know how to have a database be part of our dagger object graph. So now you're set up to do something like building an offline first app using a pattern similar to the repository pattern that we use where we have a cache and API call. You can add in a local or database call to that and have three potential sources for data. That may be something we look at in a future section, but for now that's it. Thanks for watching.